So in this video, we're gonna be covering the three top hacks I have for you to land your dream job. These are gonna be some of the best strategies that I've used in my entire entrepreneurial and sales career, getting jobs at some of the top companies like Oracle, Y Combinator Back Startup, and even consulting and advisory roles. So I'm gonna pass on these lessons to you so that you can nail your dream job, get paid what you're worth, and have fun doing it. Now, before we get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you want to take your sales game to the next level, make sure to check out my masterclass at saleslegacy.com where we have a free training that's going to teach you everything you need to know about sales. So check that out and let's dive into this video. Now, there's a lot of challenges when it comes to landing your dream job. Some people will say, oh, I don't have any experience. So how can I get a job? My CV looks boring, especially if you're just starting out or if you are graduating from university, right? So the first tip I have for everyone here is that you got to work for free. You don't always have to work for free. You know, there's a caveat to that. Right? You can do an internship and get paid like minimum wage or something like that. But in the event that there's no paid opportunities, you have to be willing to work for free. So I'll give you a story. So back in the day when I was in university, right, and I went to the University of Southern California. And back in those days, you know, I started my working experience in sales working for free. So the first company I worked for was this company called The Foundation. So back in the day, I was really into streetwear, like, you know, basically whatever you see on hypebeast.com. And I wanted to work in the industry, right? I had no connections. I didn't even know how the industry worked. I have no fashion experience, no marketing experience. I was just a student. So, you know, I literally just saw this video on hypebeast.com. And then there was this company kind of like doing advertising for their services. And I applied, I sent them a cold email. I said, Hey, I'm a student at USC. I love the video on Hypebeast and uh, just curious to see if you have any internships. And then one of the founders of that company forwarded my email to one of their managers. They did an interview and I got the job, right? I was just working for free, to be honest. You know, I didn't really care about the payment and I just want to learn what you guys are doing. I want to get my foot in the door. I'm willing to do anything pretty much, right? There's a lot of cool things I've done. Like I got, I get to go to like trade shows. I got to meet different people, different industry titans at that time. So it was really good exposure at the same time I was doing things like folding clothes ironing clothes as well because this is a streetwear like sales agency right so they have showrooms and I have to be the guy who's literally like ironing the clothes right and I didn't mind because I got to be around the people who were doing this kind of business even in my career now you know like I help people for free all the time you know whether it's my friends or colleagues and stuff I'll give them free advice which I can charge money for like consulting money for because I want to help out right and then later on down the line they're gonna feel like oh damn like Patrick really helped me out and he didn't ask for anything and now now that we have this bigger opportunity, I want to see if he wants to be on board. So if you're someone who doesn't have much experience and you're starting from the bottom, just do it for free. Get some experience, get some connections, and through those connections, you'll leverage it into something else. You know, then you're going to get to know more people and you get more skills and you keep leveraging up and up and up and up and up, right? So work for free in the beginning. And even if you are already at the top or in the middle or somewhere like that, it's okay to work for free on the side if you believe that it's worth it, you want to help out, and maybe it will lead to more opportunity. Sometimes it doesn't lead to anything, and sometimes it does right but you only need one good break to change your life you know i believe in karma and things like that and putting good energy out into the world and it usually does come back all right next tip i have for you is this in the modern day you definitely need to leverage social media whether it's instagram linkedin twitter youtube depends what your niche is what industry you want to work in and things like that but you definitely need to have at least one right and i'll tell you another personal story for my career especially in web3 so web3 if you don't know what it is it's basically crypto and nfts when i got started in crypto and nfts and the whole web3 world i didn't have any connections People know me as a B2B sales guy on YouTube, but it has nothing to do with crypto, right? And NFTs. I just started, I created a new YouTube channel called The Parallax. What I did in the beginning was just make videos about NFTs and mainly covering the news. So I would just cover what's hot, what's interesting, what new brands are doing NFTs now, who's moving into NFTs. And I would just cover the news every single week, right? And through that, I gained a following on YouTube, starting from zero subscribers on a brand new channel. Then I got those subscribers to follow me on Twitter and I started growing on Twitter. So I have like 30,000 followers on Twitter or something like that. I just built a name for myself from scratch, right? And all I really did in the beginning was look at the news, give my commentary on it. And then people, because they want to keep updated with what's going on, they follow me for that. And then because I'm very honest with how with giving my opinion on certain projects, and I'm not like trying to do anything shady or cash grabbing and things like that, people respect that. So that's why they follow me. And then from there, it leads to more business opportunities on the back end, like advising and consulting and things of that nature. Not only that, but because a lot of founders and high level 
people also watch my YouTube channel, right? The Parallax, they eventually want to DM me on Twitter and they want to meet me and then we become friends and things like that. Through using social media and just giving my commentary on the space, I was able to build literally all my connections in an industry where I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any connections. I had no advantage and I just built a, built a name for myself in less than two years, right? You know, from that story, you can also do it in any other niche as well, whether you're doing fitness, whether it's money Twitter, you know, whatever the case is, productivity, like actually creating content is one of the hacks when it comes to meeting people because when they see like, oh, like thousands of people are watching this person's content must be something interesting, right? So if I reach out to people, you know, they're more likely to respond. But most of the time people reach out to me because they say first, like, hey, you know, I love your content, you know, we should connect. And then I start a relationship from there. Now applying this into getting your dream job, right? So if you want to do, let's say marketing for consumer brands, it kind of helps a lot if you have a pop in Instagram, right? You don't have to be like famous, famous, but if you have a couple thousand followers, you have a really nice aesthetic. And so the brand owner is going to look at your Instagram and say, hey, you know, like they really know how to make their Instagram look cool. So I can clearly see how they can make my products look cool on my Instagram page. So I'm going to hire them for sure. Or, you know, if you're giving your opinion on like NFTs and crypto and, you know, you seem like you really know what you're talking about. Well, big brands with big budgets will pay you money for consulting because they see that you know what you're talking about, right? What you put on social media is a reflection of who you are. And yeah, you know, it's this world where people want to share the highlights or share the best versions of themselves. So it's like a CV, like a resume, right? You know, you can have a personal Instagram where it's just for friends, but if you're talking like business and you want to like land your dream job, you got to have something that represents you professionally so that people can look at that, whether it's your LinkedIn or your Twitter or whatever, and they hire you, right? And a lot of people, especially in the Web3 space, they get hired just based on their Twitter. So if you have a social media presence, your advantage over other people is just so much greater because people know who you are, you know? But even if you have the skills and people don't know who you are, then they can't hire you. Now, the next tip that I have for you is this. You want to develop specialized skills, right? In the beginning, maybe you have no skills, but you have to understand like in every business, there's going to be different departments. So you need to develop certain skills so that you can be the head or run that department. Or like if they do hire you, it'd be easier to train you. For me, the first skill that I learned outside of school is going to be sales, right? I started at Oracle selling tech products. And then that allowed me to understand the fundamentals of sales so that I can basically go into any company and figure out how to sell their product. So if you think about it, you know, for any B2B company, they have to do B2B sales, meaning somebody has to talk talk to them, whether it's on the phone, in person, on Zoom, whatever the case is, in order for them to sign a deal. So if I have the skill set of selling, no matter what happens in my life, even if tomorrow I lost everything and I started from zero, I can always go get a sales job because I know how to sell products and services, right? So I'll never go hungry, no matter what. And if you're good at sales, you're you're making a lot of money, you're like right off the bat with salary and commissions. You gotta think about like, what's your skill, you know, that you can offer to people that's gonna be something that's timeless, whether it's sales, marketing, or maybe you're like a really sick, you know, UI designer and then you're always up to date with what's going on. People pay a lot of money for that skill set. So you need to develop a skill. You can't just like expect to land your dream job and get paid just for being you. You have to have something special that makes you unique, something of value that a lot of other people don't have so that one, you can get the job you actually want because you're different from everybody else. And number two, you can get paid really well because you have a skill that other people cannot do. The higher level your skill, the more you specialize, the more money you get paid. If you're too general, you can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then it's hard to kind of move up the ladder in that pay skill set. Eventually when companies get larger, they scale, they have to specialize, right? Yeah, in the beginning, like startups and stuff, there's a lot of advantages to it. But over time, if you know, if you're just looking for a job, you want to get paid, you know, you should be really good at sales, really good at marketing, really good at design, really good at operations, whatever the case is, you know, pick something that you want to be good at. And of course, you can combine different elements. For example, a marketer who has some sense of design and putting that together can be really dangerous, right? In terms of like how much impact they can have at a company. So don't be afraid to combine skill sets, but you have to, you know, specialize in at least one, right? If you think about all the things we talked about in this video, right? It's like working for free to develop your skill sets, using social media to build a brand so people know who you are and having a skill. So if you have a skill that is high demand, everybody knows who you are in the industry because you have Twitter, for example, and you have done free work so that you have some kind of resume. It would be kind of you know crazy if you didn't have a job you actually wanted, right? Can't guarantee it, but then that's going to definitely increase your likelihood of landing the job that you want. That's everything we got to cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and check out my masterclass saleslegacy.com if you want to learn how to take your sales skill to the next level and even land at tech sales job and earn big commissions. So my name is Patrick Deng and I will see you in the next one.